Okay. Alright, so, yeah. okay. so we start talking about it um, between the three of us, we realised that one of the common things that we find was that our dad took it quite nicely into some of the ideas from the man who worked in informal education. Um, but just because it's our dad, we want to stress that we're not suggesting that this is everyone's dad. Yeah. Okay, you all like, might be in someone else that exists that might not be, but it doesn't necessarily have to be sad. So, some background on our dads. <laughs> um, my dad is from Morris Green, um, he's the youngest of three brothers, um, and the two brothers were quite a lot on planning, so he turned 15 to 20 years old then. And he was quite unremarkable, everything was quite unremarkable, so he was sort of step up to play in school, and he was like, thank you very well. And I don't think he actually finished secondary school. And then um, he decided that he wanted much more than what his brothers and his mum and his dad had, and he taught himself everything that he wanted to know. So he discovered books, and he's read hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books, and he's seen every single film on the sun, and he's listened to every album on the sun, and that's what he wanted, that was, that was what he wants to learn, it's what he went away and he learned, and became an expert in all that. That's what he for himself. Um, so my dad, he told me, he said, I used to go to school, uh, it was an exam, but when I only read me because of the pub, so he told me, <laughs> which day, and I said, well, you can't make me go to school. He said, you've got to go. That was one of the things that, that's the way he grew up, and he was never put pressure on him to do anything other than what he wanted to do. But we all said, like, you know, he left school, no qualifications, and he kept saying to me, oh, go be a train driver, well, you don't need qualifications for that. I said, well, I don't want to be a train driver, Dad. Because you went to the training, I want to work here. And he was very against me going to university. He was like, you don't need it, you're not going to need it. I said, well, it's a decision I want to make because you never, he never had that push behind him, whereas I did in some ways. And, but my dad is so clever. I don't tell him because he gets big headed, but he, <laughs> he's an expert in his own, like, our three dads are an expert in their own field and their own interest. So my dad travelled the world, so he wandered. So to read, if he wandered, and he, I'll say on going, he goes, I've been there three times, and I'm like, oh, that's nice. He's been everywhere, and this life experience has given him his expertise, his knowledge, and that's what he comes on to us when he tries to. And he's an amazing chef, like he, he cooks, and he, he's, he's great, and that's something that he shares with me and my sister, and now he shares with my nephews and my niece and they, they watch in the kitchen and it's like it's amazing watching him but he's not a chef he's not a chef by trade he's a chef because it was his interest and he continued his interest and it's his passion that he now shares with us um, well my dad he spoke from day one so he didn't and he dropped out for no reason when 13 or 14 years old he just stopped going his mum and dad thought he was still going because he said yeah he was good and got on the road he wasn't back on the game then the evening but um, my dad would be quite like, he's very smart like, when it comes to like, maths and history and stuff, but like, he went on to kind of, to work, putting up like bits and sheds and welding and stuff, and he's no one about home for his welding, where like, people would come to him to weld things over like, people who have their welding certificates, because they just know he's good at it, and that's, like, he's learned, he's been doing that for like, 30, 40 years now. So like he's also there to his like life experiences and like if I was ever like needed to have a mass homework and like I would always go to Daddy or Mommy because like he'd be the one to be able to help me with it. So and like he's an expert on his interest or if something's broken the house to make sure like we go to Daddy and be able to fix it. Perfect. So we would. Yeah. There was a couple of things that we talked about. So um we were talking about um, multiple intelligences um, and how we go on it, and the idea that our dads were probably let down a little bit by um, the focus on mathematical intelligence and um, more formal intelligences rather than the creative side of it. Um, and if that had been allowed to, uh, to be focused on, if that was allowed to be the, the sign of an intelligent person, then maybe school would have been quite different for them, and maybe. We would have left with some qualifications. We talked about the fact that formal education was probably the board's side of it that left them to fall out of love with formal education if there was ever much to start off with. 
Um, we used um, expressionism to create our publication, so it was quite an expressionist process. We had some very quick ideas to it all together. Um, we found all these threads with sort of links between the three of us, between the and then between the new ideas. Um, and we thought that uh, something that Alex had said during his talk, uh, one of the last things that was said, is that the refugee race no kind of informed education um, focuses on valuing people from the knowledge that they do have, and that that's what, we, that's what we've done. We value our yeah. dads yeah. the knowledge that they do have, that the things that they like, they share with us, they share with our communities. And... But we said there's no reason why our dads couldn't go mm -hmm. to a refugee university and talk about what they know because they haven't got the qualifications, but my dad would speak better than I would speak. Because of the life experience that he has and his ability, he would, you know, he'd have the room in fits of laughter <laughs> whilst he was speaking about Croke and Bush, and even there, like the things he comes out with. But it's not even just like we watch the chase of an evening, and I'm like, I'm going to sign you up. And every question is like, dude, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, mm -hmm. how do you love me? And he's like, I don't give him enough credit where it's due. I think we all, like, we found it really interesting that we. Hold this thread, and all three of us had a dad that had this intelligence, but nothing behind it or nothing to show for it. Mm -hmm. And we've all come and chose to go to university. We'll have something to show for, but will we ever be as intelligent as our dad? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> so, yeah, that's our time. That's our time. Excellent. <laughs> I'd love to hear that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I just, can I add, just, um, yeah, I love it, you know, I love it, love it all. But um, so their school, their view of school, you know, I think she touched on their, their view of school. Their view, it'd be interesting to see what their view of school is now, looking back. And what's their view of formal education? What did you said about? Pushing me to go, yeah, not pushing me to go to uni, but being proud of you all. So that'd be a good conversation to have, wouldn't it? Yeah. Interesting around this number. Yeah, so if I was in Paris, I saw my my mum and dad stuff up when I was seven. So I was like, who could go to the second school? He didn't have as much of them, but I just wanted to do what I was like, but he was absolutely as much to go to. Um, like Nancy yeah, Taylor's in St. Mary's and Crossing Road, all private schools and pension designs, and he was sure of it. I went, no, I want to go to St. Mary's, which is just like the local school. It's not the only one. That's a comprehensive school. Comprehensive school, yeah. He, um, he was absolutely furious at me and talking about it, and he never finished school on the first place. I was already going to be one step ahead of him regardless because he's not going to just drop out like he did. He had the mm -hmm. he had the chance to. Um, and he made sure I went to university, my little sister's gone to university and the little sister who's younger than her is, I mean, excellent. She's in a school age she will, but she's done Latin and she's done astrophysics and she's done this and she's done that because he will not let her out or he has not he needs to better when he needs to need to. So, Mm. I don't think he, he's as critical of it for us as he was for himself. He thinks he thinks way cleverer than he wants. Yeah. That's the problem. So he <laughs> thinks that he thinks it's better. That's where our dad's different yeah. because my dad wasn't like that. He he was he said to me, Don't go to university, it's a waste of time. <laughs> and I said, Well, I'm going to university, so we don't need to go. And we have the time. He still doesn't believe to this day that you have to stay. In formal education until you're 18. No, you're wrong. You leave them 16, you get a job. You won't have it. I've told them, I've showed him, I'm like, no, I don't believe it. He will not have it. And although he's, he's proud of me, he believes that I didn't need to do this to be where I am now. Like, he doesn't think that I need that from that to you. So, in my eyes, that's where I just differ, is that my dad isn't like that at all. Um, and that's very funny that you just said that because we didn't even know yeah. that, did we? But, but yeah, no. That wasn't my day. <laughs> so you've all valued their so it'd be interesting to say to them if I but value their knowledge. Yeah. And it, and then it'd be interesting mm -hmm. to see do they value yours. Yeah. 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 Well anyway.
That's the whole discussion. Can I ask you a question? Uh, this is very personal to you, isn't it? This, mm-hmm. this, this is your dad. Yeah. So this is actually where you've come from. Yeah. So this is part of your identity that you're, you're sort of picking it up. Mm-hmm. And you're sort of, well, maybe it's something that's happened today. Maybe it's, you know, but actually all this form of education stuff that is very much part of your world has actually not been part of another part of your world, which is incredibly important to you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's all you're yeah. I'm, uh, I can relate to that. Yeah, <laughs> we've all got one. You'll find them somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's one of the beauties of this, because it's, it's, a, it's a great metaphor mm-hmm. yeah. that everybody can relate to that. Yeah. In one way, you know, it's become biological that a father and figure. Yeah. yeah. But we said, like, like I said about an older friend, you know, it doesn't have to be your dad or your mum. You know, I haven't really got any old friends, but like, even my granddad, you know, yeah. the knowledge I've got, I've got him over the years, and it's amazing what a nearly 90 year old man can share and his outlook on things when you're 20. And yeah. you've got to you've got to you <laughs> <say, laughs> you know, But he's so, uh, there is intelligence, it might be hidden to, the academics, but we see it, we grow up with it. Yeah, absolutely. Can I ask you all, um, so it, it's clear to me that you, your value your dad, mm-hmm. and uh, how do you, how has that, how, how do you come to value and know that, that debt in your dad, you know, Maybe, you know, maybe there's not a simple answer for, for you know, but that's one of the questions that I'm always exploring. How do we value the knowledge and the qualities in other people? Uh, I don't know if this answers it, but I think, for me, I'm always one that kind of pushes what my dad says aside, but then, like, as you get older, and I'm, like, I go on holiday saying, I'm talking to me and my sister, and I'm, I'm doing something that my dad's taught me, and I'm like, oh, I learned this from my dad, and I'm like, I value what I learned because it was from him, so I kind of, that's how I kind of appreciate it, is that when you do it for yourself, but you realise it came from somewhere else, and you can make that link back to them, and you realise that they did teach something. And you did take it on board, even if I wasn't listening because I was on my phone at the time. I did, I did listen because I've just done it. And I'm like, Dad, guess what? I've just done it. And he's like, oh. So, yeah, that's kind of what, I don't know that answers what you said, but kind of, that's why I value it, is doing it for myself when I'm being taught it from him. Right, excellent. Uh, many thanks for that. Thanks to Dad. Another <laughs> <laughs> right, so uh, next we'll go on next. Oh, yes. Come on, it's not going to be a problem. It's just like you. I'm not even a little bit. I'll see you very late, boys. <laughs> I'm not even for that. I'm not so before we start, we would just like you guys to talk in two, three, how do you feel about just teach some teach somebody around you about something you're passionate about? Just like one minute, just separate ways. Anything you want. Well, I'm going to teach something. You don't have to meet in a room. Yes, uh, so, uh, pockets, well, just to start seeing. Uh, <laughs> so, really, just like trying to find uh, <laughs> the basis of 
thought to uh, and I can't find the root in the trust. Stop the case. So that's the usual part of flour and butter. You fry the flour in the butter and then you add water liquid and stir it out into the bin and add some whisk and add it to the bin. The bin is going to go all the way to the bin. Okay, so just bring it back in. I want the stories. So that was obviously the concept of a ragged university, the idea that learning can happen anywhere. And although it does take place in a classroom, it's quite an informal uh, way of learning. We didn't give you any specific boundaries, we didn't tell you anything, do part of talks and groups, we just let you discuss and talk about anything you wanted to learn really, or it, particularly about anything. Um, over here it was a bit more, there wasn't practically no learning going on, it was just very sappy in a way. But it was but, but there was still like an element of you learn something about people and you kind of mm-hmm. had learned that mess about stuff. So <laughs> so this learning still occurs, but just in an informal way. Um, and the fact even though I was in a classroom, we could have gone to the pub or library, coffee shop, the park, <coughs> it just shows that le- learning can happen anyway, that kind of conversation can happen in any particular setting. Um, so on that note, can we have an example in the class about when they've learned something from somebody else but not in an education environment, so it could be teaching a video game or literally anything that you've learned and you found useful? Uh, Jake teaches me about Liverpool when I go to the match at Anfield. Yeah, that's a really good example because would you have, would, if you taught that in the classroom, do you think you would have learned it better? Or do you think that... Seeing it, it like, sort of, and then I enjoy it when it's on the telly because I'm like, oh yeah, there it is. So you learn to experience, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what you get. So, you how... You can learn to outside your room. <laughs> <laughs> so how we kind of looked at it was using an rabbit analogy that Alex used before kind of expanding on it. So your rabbit that was sat in the cage, you can almost describe it as being in a formal education setting because it does what the master says. The master lets it out, then you know that's the master's choice. And you have to kind of go with what the master says. Um, if you've got sort of a rabbit farm, the rabbits can go free, but ultimately they are enclosed but they can't escape anywhere. Um, and they so that would sort of take the a uh, non-formal education room. But if you've got a rabbit in the wild, well that's the informal because technically you don't have to learn. You don't have to learn how to survive to avoid orcs to eat. They can, they, they can just die because they would they don't have to learn it. Obviously they want to learn. <laughs> but they can they could that that's how they could do it. They can just literally give up and just not bother. So my opinion is that that the Ragged University is good, but only when you're a bit older. So, for example, when you're due to start education at the age of five years old, like, you need to learn the skills, because we couldn't have this discussion now if we didn't have our basic skills that we learned from primary school, um, because we learned it at that age. Obviously, you can learn it at a later in life, but in my opinion, the ideal situation, obviously, might not happen, but that you finish falling up until primary school level when you have your choice, about what to learn or where to learn, depending on your environment and your obviously personal factors that matter to you. And so that's, that's but then the what we what we could argue is we could say well some of them children aren't obliged to go to class. Well they do because I, what I question is when I first started asking them is well when I was at age I just want to play with my friends. But as it turned but eventually you just get sick of playing and kids do wander into the class and start learning. So it does take part of the Ragged University. We're really, really at Ragged University. However, um, the kids have to go to school. So if they don't have a choice about being there, they have a choice what classes they go to, they don't have a choice about being there. But then once they are there, they choose what they want to learn. Um, so just a few things I've like picked up from Alex. Um, education is not preparation for life. It is life itself. 
It's always a really good quote. Um, and there, uh, Rangan University is learning from another person that in any environment, knowledge and wisdom are in people. Oh, that was a quote. And uh, uh, we think that it's uh, important to get a balance in terms of formal learning and non formal learning. Well, so, one of the best questions he was asked what inspired you to learn? And his, the summary of his answer was just people. And we thought that was uh, quite a really interesting answer. So when are you not learning? Well, I, just, just, I can't think of it because I know, but I know I've read things that say you're always really learning, aren't you? No matter what setting you're in, you're always picking up, whether it be actual lessons in the school, sort of people's behaviour, you could be walking with someone and you know it's the shoot really loud, but technically you weren't that bad that person. Mm. So essentially you could always be learning, you're always taking in some form of information. So there's no distinction between learning and living. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, unless you're doing something that you're obviously it's a rare case that if you're a complete expert at something, then you wouldn't really have anything else to learn about that topic. But obviously that's very rare because not everybody is a complete expert in a certain field. So you're, yeah, in terms of when you're living, you're learning about something. Even if it's just walking down the street and saying, oh, I didn't know this train left at eight minutes past an hour. I know that for the future, so I'm going to turn up and wait for... We love Frank Speed. Alex didn't have much of a form education, but you wouldn't say... But he's an idiot. He's always 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 well, that's, that's the question. Yeah. 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 Can I ask a question? Sorry, I'm not going into this. But no. do you know what you said about primary school, like having to go to that to learn, like the base? Mm -hmm. But why can't you learn that from somewhere else? Like, because people at home school and everything learn it from like the home school. Yeah, but then it's still sort of following the, the formal curriculum. That because I lived in home school and stuff like that, you always have to teach the basic fundamentals of Latin, English, science. So yeah. when you're five, you know, when you're four or five years old, you learn phonics, and you're still within the same stages. You learn through the environment. You learn it. But it's not. Sorry, it's not necessarily yeah. in like the same context as a formal thing, because like maybe also it can be more collaborative rather than just real. Yeah, but you still have to, <laughs> still have to follow the curriculum. You do get like, no, I get that. Uh, yeah, which is where it's kind of formal and it's all right. I know what you mean, and I agree with you. It, it has got elements of uh, non-formal non and informal education, but the thing we know is that the majority is formal just because of the curriculum that's set and the fact you do get tested um, for it. Just, can I just make a suggestion? Whenever you find yourself saying you've got to do it X, Y, and Z, turn it into a question. What is a curriculum? Don't answer it now, but just, just turn it into a question because these things are not set in stone. Um, what is it? Do you have any your thoughts on how the informal and the formal might support each other? We wouldn't have met you without university. Is mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. So I now have met you. I was aware of running at university before I came to uni. Now I am. Now I'm aware of these public lectures. I can actually go to them. But if I haven't come to university to the formal setting, I would uh, quite, yeah, there is a the chance that I could have like, found you in another way. But the, that, this process has ensured that I've met you, so there would be other chance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I found it was hard to separate the ideas of left and right from each other. It, it, yeah, it is it's really hard. Mm -hmm. I think they do, they do complement each other in their own right. But, so, yeah, you, you, I don't think you'll ever be able to separate them. But I think you can actually have more and more of you. Like, like, 
Oh, yeah. All right, excellent. Thanks, guys. I'll I'll quite go. I'll 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 so, um, I hope you don't mind me saying this, Alex, but for the first 20 minutes of your Call today. I have no idea what you were on about, <laughs> and I, I I realized I was thinking of it literally. I was thinking the ragged university is the university, and look back on it, it's not. It's it's a school, but in the philosophical sense, it's like a Plato or Aristotle school. With that in mind, who's seen the School of Rock? Show of hands. Who feels that it has affected the way that they teach and they learn show hand. Oh, I might think so. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of you, they have to be up by the end of it. <laughs> um, like my view of Ragged University not being rag, not being a university, School of Rock isn't a school. In the actual film, the School of Rock is the name of the band. So it's taking it away from the school being this institution to being this uh, social ownership, collective ownership. Yeah, so in the movie, obviously at the beginning, if the school is seen as basically an institution where it's just dragged on, everything's very grey, the walls are grey, the uniforms are grey, they're nearly grey and black and white, and then there's just no life, and then this explosion that's probably the best way to put it comes into the class and forms a teacher and teaches them how to be creative, but he doesn't really come in and start on their level of what you want to say expertise and being and learning. Um, he just kind of up here. He's just like, come, come join me. Learn how to be creative. And they, act, they do need to learn how to be creative yeah. because they don't understand how to initially be creative. And there's a bit in the movie when someone says, you're too dumb to play the drums or you're too dumb to play all the instrument. And that's critiquing what people find in be intelligent, like they assume that being intelligent is being very intelligent and not having like being musically intelligent, which he is even in the movie he turns out to be one of probably the best drummers yeah. around. And he it says in the movie too they, they keep saying stick to the man, which I think is hilarious because it is like stick to the government and be like you don't need to stick to the curriculum, like come play in a band and have fun and you can see the area of tone shift in the movie and that everybody's learning how to follow them trying to encourage people to be creative in their own right. And the, really in the movie too, there's no focus on exams, which in an IV world that is the utopia, that's what children dream of, just going to school and not doing anything and not doing any exams. But I think the movie is more of a critique on what we view education to be. Rather than it to be, it is about a band, but I, what I talk about what is, is that children have more, like, I don't know how to it, like, all my teachers and still that I loved and I remember are the most creative and are their teachers, and I don't remember the dog teachers at all. So, from this, what I brought is. Teachers are better when they're creative and they encourage themselves to be creative, and that's just my opinion. And um, I've done that, I've said about how he comes into the classroom and he's a big ball of energy. He, he, he doesn't force himself and his creative views on kids. He allows them to sort of realise that they can form their views creatively from what they already have. So there's a scene in it where they think, right, let's write a rock song. And he says, uh, what do you guys hate? Uh, someone says, I don't like when I get no allowance. I don't like it when I get um, when I get bullied. And through this sort of discernment, 
they <laughs> realise that they are creative. Uh, again, further on in the film, um, now that they've, they've realised that they have this potential to learn and to broadly learn rather than set strict uh, lesson structures, um, one of the one of the kids he, he, he goes off and he he lets his mind wander, so he has a bereave, and he comes back with this great rock song. And it's just showing that the, the limitations in formal education are somewhat crippling when compared to informal. Granted, it's, it's fiction, but from, from the links that we've managed to make, it shows that it has quite a strong rooting in real society. Yeah, you, in the movie as well, the moment he was a cop, when he realised that the past is amazing, where he's walking past. Yeah. So mm-hmm. Yeah. He's walking past a classical lesson, and, and it's like slightly that. eureka, the yeah. bumps and moments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so that like shows that every class has potential, so like people watching would be like, oh, I can't do this, so I can't play an instrument. But realistically, like, everybody can shake a tambourine or so like it does it gives everyone the feeling that they can't do it and like you know it seems like such a dreary and just horrible place to be at the start it turns out to be probably the most fun experience that they have um, yeah and it's the greatest yeah. movie yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the last 15 years yeah. Yeah. excellent <laughs> No questions. <laughs> I really like the the link that you made. We all, you know, we spoke about it. You you made it a nice link. <laughs> I would never have bought the still of rock with the idea that I'd say, but the way you explained it just kind of you know ring ring trick. You know, you know. I think it does. Like once you see it, you can not contemplate it. You do realize that teachers are more than you want. Yeah, they're still come across us in some movies. They saw movies to come across and like kick out lessons and I mean the same sort of can be stuff with um, the Dead Poets Society and the collective conversation. And granted it's not explicitly mentioned as much in this film, but you can see there's conversation between teacher and pupil and the lines of that get very much blurred and it's it's not teacher and pupil but bandmate and bandmate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What conditions do you think are important for creativity? I don't think that there needs to be a certain kind of condition. Like, if you can come onto any classroom and be creative, if it's what you make of it, so, like, even though this room is very bland and there's nothing in it, like, you can hear, like, we have and draw all kinds and talk, and, like, there doesn't need to be, like, a wide open space and a million different resources, like, it is what you make of it, I think. So, I think as a teacher, like, like, is aware of, like, how to be creative and how to get in to express themselves, then, if teachers were aware of it, then children will just kind of yeah. carry on with their flow rather than. Well, I think, I think creativity, it takes one moment where you sort of suspend your belief in you're in the moment and you're not, you're away with it. And if you keep going with that moment after moment, then you allow yourself to be continuously creative. You don't need loads of resources or loads of space. You just need to sort of have that one moment where you can get away with it. Yeah, and keep flow. going and keep going with the flow, yeah. But an institution can kill creativity. Yeah. How does that work? I think at the moment, especially with exam, <laughs> the pressure from the amount in the national curriculum, people yeah. don't have the time. No. So I'm sure everybody wants to form a band, but don't have the time to go and do <laughs> things with all that Okay, so why has that happened? If we think creativity is so important, why has that happened? Yes, as you were saying, about, um, there has to be failure for people to come out. Yeah. Institutions are killing creativity, but they're also creating failure. So it, yeah. there's this competition in the important subjects. Okay. In your maths, your English, your science, then they need to prioritize.
priorities and it's it's pushed under the right. carpet so, at the so moment it is a contemporary issue and it's which is a bit of a fun. The the institutions have created failure to keep themselves going. But in the process they created the conditions where creativity becomes more difficult. Mm. Mm -hmm. But you also see the rise of institutions that uh, that encourage creative so, so you've got Lipper and uh, Sam, you've got dedicated creative universities <laughs> and colleges that specialise in performing arts or creative arts. Yeah. So you can look at it that institutions are bad for creativity, but you can also see it as they are really good for it. So you can see that in a way, in a world where we drive towards a goal, whether it be a qualification or a job, you normally have to go for an institution. So if it's creative, you aim for that and you work for it. Or you do stuff on YouTube. Or you do stuff on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> So we made this like pass through thing due to like we put from the analogy like the diving one that you used um about the like the rabbit from the cage and stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so when, when we was like talking about it, we, we kind of like drew comparisons to the, the classroom in a way where we're kind of like the teachers at the front and they're told what to do, not really told how to think independently. So we put like uh, the teachers' rules rather than like the democracy. Um, yeah, so we're not like thinking the way we want to. Like, there's no room for to express ourselves when we want to. Um, and then we thought that the reasons why is because of the like we were speaking about like, the compositions and the lead tables and the teaching to pass the test and how it's just trying to create this person to be kind of a slave to society rather than individuals to be free to who they want to be and do what they want to do. And like we were saying before, it does. Between the creativity and the imagination, so we put also like music on it, and like the best way to solve like this region, like the map. It's like schools are fun setting, so children aren't allowed to like, explore their creativity, and, like how they were like not allowed to explore their own objectives. So because it's all about tests, it's all about academic achievement, but we could use like. Probably draw where children are actually allowed to like develop and creativity and actually develop valuable life skills, which can be about the better speaking and listening and like the confidence to express themselves in ways that like, the global education system they probably wouldn't before. Yeah, we said the importance of drawing back to like role play um, in a classroom as well because sometimes you can actually express your knowledge as a character which you might not want to express in yourself because it might just be something you think you're going to be judged on. Whereas if you're a part of a character, then people are listening. It's not you that's saying it. So when you come out of it, it's not like you're thinking, I'm judging you, but judge the character that you become. So, so like, obviously, that's why we thought that like, creativity, creativity is important. And we're saying, like, having like, so, like, man's the expert, which people will learn about an hour of the module, but tying it into this. So, like, like it's about the role of maybe sitting down and discussing it with the children, not saying these are my rules. But so, what should we do when we've done pastoring? Who wants to be my scribe and getting more? From the children. Um, but you start finding in between the ragged university and the formal education, it's like Harry said, like, and Karen. I, I like the ragged university, but I also think you do need to have some sort of structure, otherwise, well, I personally would just go mad. Like, I, I like to have, I like, know what I'm doing. I don't know. That's... So it's like you're being constrained to one kind of environment and being told that this is the 
this is the one and only way you can do it, and there's no other way. Because like, like before, I'm one, like the best way to work out this maths done in. So I was here to help before. Like, I remember when I was in year five and I got this mix, so I could not do long division for so my life. And my teacher was saying, well, this is how you do it. And I said, well, I can't do it that way. I don't know how you do it. And then he wasn't helpful and he said, there's no other way to do it. That's how you've got to do it. So I went home and I spoke to my stepdad at the time and was like, I don't know how to do it. He said, well, I do it this way. And then showed me how he did it. And then I could do it. Because you were saying, mm-hmm. and then it's like you can do it, but then you've got these method marks and then they'll look at your work and be like, well, you're not getting a method mark. You've got the answer, but you haven't done the method that the government want you to do. So like... Then it means it's not getting Yeah. Maybe if we just got in, I'd be happy to go in to different environments and develop like, different skills yeah, different yeah. methods instead of just teaching one yeah. for one type of channel. And like you said, about being collaborative and learning from you know, other than I was learning from and moving that hierarchy. And, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, the model that you created, uh, like, I think it's really useful for this. It, it, it does really quite effectively articulate the you know of your containment. Yeah. 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 There was a um, uh, used to a, a very limited teacher just to work at primary school not that long ago around Manchester. He went into an under primary school, he was a maths teacher, and he set a problem. And he said, Right, I want all kids to be engaged with this. Um, I don't want the answer, I just want to know how many ways you can think of solving the problem. And, um, you know, some of the bright kids could think of loads of ways. You know, as they said, you know, you do like this, you like this, you like this, and then, and, and others said, you know, too, how to work with you start, and some people just said one way. And he, he gathered all of the solutions of the kids together, and then shared that with everybody. And said, look, this is how everybody thinks you can solve this problem. And he was really interested in the ones that were really struggling. And he said there was one girl who, who really didn't get it. Didn't, didn't really understand it. And, and he said, but look, you can do it in all of these ways. And he said, and she, what she did was she looked really disappointed. She looked at him and she said, I can't do it like that today because that's not the way it says in the book. Mm-hmm. And I that's such a profound mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. It's exactly what you're saying. Yeah, it's like the method marks when you, you know. Learning through GCSEs, you get the AQ, AQA original guide, but all are in the exact same method yeah. to answer the exact same question. Yeah. But okay, was it you who said about the school being like a lot of factors? Yeah, Ken Robinson's film, we watched the uh, first year, we watched the film, and then Robin Allen's film. But, you know, it's interesting to say that, you know, I find some research going, you know, to the deficit model where it doesn't celebrate the, um, celebrate the really interesting research and doing, you know, about teaching maths to football. Maybe, yeah, it's really wide and loose, you know. So research often just focuses on things instead of acknowledging the power that we have. Mm-hmm. And you can learn bands, you can teach back to football, mm-hmm. you can just play the film of the way. So, we, you know, it has always been us since we've had an educational system keeping in a cage, but actually not doing in a cage. Or how do you, we're all trying to work ways to get out of that cage. Mm-hmm. But that's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and then that's what like, we were just talking about with the whole like drama game. Yeah. Um, yeah, like we were talking about what we were talking about in the other module and how mm. you can approach like, like you can use drama to go through like, yeah, around yeah. history and like, English, literally everything. Yeah. It's having to build in different skills, like life skills from drama yeah. and building yeah. confidence as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm a big thing once in the yeah. health and stuff like that. Like, before I don't have the confidence, yeah. it made you feel like you're in any way to kind of express myself. 
That's the same type of thing that you should do. Yeah. Because, like, with the rules, when I went on my placement, the teacher that I worked with, she did that exact, she just finished their junior degree the same course. And she'd gone into the classroom, and her first day was my first day. She was covering maternity. And she's like, right, I'm going to sit down with you and let's like, plan our rules. And because they actually made up the rules on their own, they were kind of performing way more than any other class. Because they were like, well, I made up that rule. And she's like, oh, you got this control rule. And like, like, because they made them up. Instead of feeling like, I made these up, so they're going to like go off on their own tangents and not listen. And it worked way better than any classroom I've ever worked in. So it shows it does work. I think, like, sorry, like going back to the first class interaction thing, like, and convey about being, like, seeing children and people as individuals, not just the same. Mm-hmm. And that, I think, because I went out and still the most was like, each of your last favourites, like, mm-hmm. you know, put people yeah. down. And, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the notion of their stages of learning in the factory, the forward model, which, well, um, I'd like to hear your thoughts on how well uh, people can structure their own tasks. So I noticed this module is, is quite open in, in uh, not having so much things prescribed. And you, you were mentioning uh, when you asked the class, you asked people to come up with the parameters and the, the rules of, of what's happening. Uh, do you think sort of the student has produced it, their own curriculum is something that, that is uh, natural to people? Yeah, because it's really interesting like, what, what you want to learn about. Like, so on the, the first session that we actually did this, we all struggled so much with what to do given that. Yeah, yeah. 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 we've never been given that freedom before to go and... We like, you just like, do what you want. Because um, <laughs> people say, we're like, we need to go how do we get the marks? And you have like, all well, it's it's your really idea. <laughs> Like, how you've taken this, and then we're all like, oh, and now it's much easier. Yeah, yeah. So, like, for a young age, I was always like, like, role playing, to learn through that, and then it just disappears as you get older. Yeah. Right, excellent. Yeah. Oh, I'm not pleased. You know, it, it, it. I remember saying to Angie that the first week, at the end of the first week, I was just going to go, what kind of stuff is going to be produced? Will it produce anything? Uh, and you kind of, you make a sale book, you know, again, you know, the, 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 the art I actually created last time was fantastic, but the things are even better. Uh, so thank you for your engagement. So many thanks. And before we finish, I want to thank Alex for coming down uh, and speaking to us. Um, Thank you all, by the way. Uh, very inspiring. And with regards to the website, you're all totally free to, to write on it. Like, there are no editors, there are only authors. And I like, you know, I'm loving all of your ideas. And I think a lot of people would enjoy learning from what you think education is and should be. Then yeah, you're totally welcome. Can I, I just on that, this is purely on my head. The, the, the final piece of work that, that these guys have to produce is, uh, is a, a, a piece of reflective writing. Um, I'm going to be on the spot now, so you don't have to give me an Could we look at maybe if, if with, you know, <laughs> college <laughs> permission, <laughs> Uh, you know, could, could we maybe look at publishing some of those on the, the Reddit website? The, it already belongs to you all. That's, you know, that is it. I'm yeah. simply a janitor. Okay, so, so yeah, you, you thought that. You know, um, <laughs> no, no obligation, but just if you want to maybe uh, I, I think about that. Can we then tell what you published? Yeah, I thought it was a...